Oh geez, the neighbor's dogs are just lighting off, of course. I'll wait. Hello and welcome back to Wires, Tires and Fires. It's Brent here. Um, yep, that's about it. Anyways, we're working on this uh, 19, I don't remember, uh, John Deere 90 skid steer. You can see that from the green that it used to be a John Deere. It's got a tag on it. Yeah, right there, John Deere. This is also sold as the Mustang 320 and something else that I don't know what it is. I'm pretty sure. So in the, pe in the previous videos, if you haven't seen it, we've been working on, we bought this thing with no working engine in it, but it was all there, you know, most of the pieces anyways. And we decided we're gonna fit this ridiculously oversized, uh, well, not ridiculously oversized, slightly larger uh, Lombardini air-cooled diesel engine into the frame. Uh, the original engine was an Onan 20 horsepower. Parts are unobtainable, and some of the parts needed to make that work were already gone. I got this from somebody who was trying to do an engine swap and kind of got to the point where they lost some things that I would have needed to make it original and then gave up on it. This is just a test fit of the engine in here. I wanted you guys to see this. I did spend quite a lot of time just screwing around uh, fiddling it into place and trying to figure out my plan for how to actually mount it because uh, two by fours and C-clamps are not my final solution yet. We can get there, uh, but <laughs> we don't wanna start there. We'll take a look down the top and you can see that the pulleys are all nicely aligned. They're as parallel as I can make them by eye. And again, this isn't the final fitting i have it over as far to this side as there's a little there's just a tiny gap there between the engine and the uh fuel line soft line uh fuel tank soft line bit right there so not too bad with that um i cheated it this way as much as possible because the exhaust comes out that side so we'll go and take a look at that so with it being cheated this much to this side. So that's good because I have the fuel filter off right now and there is plenty of room. The fuel filter would typically mount to this uh, motor mount right there. There's the fuel pump. The other nice thing is this is the original fuel line for this machine. We're gonna replace it obviously because it's harder than, than, than stone, but it, it is coming out in the right spot. The other nice thing about setting up this way, this is the throttle and the choke levers from the original machine. They come up to levers up there that I actually can't move from this side. Um, and so these will be, be made to work for the kill and the throttle. So we'll be able to have both of those up there. Though, honestly, for the first test, we're just gonna set the throttle and lock it in place manually because it is just a manual throttle down here. So we've got plenty of room for that on this side. Um, the exhaust is never gonna fit where it is. Not because there's not enough space, but because it, it runs into this hard line here. For now, I'm gonna probably try it with no exhaust, because that's, that's always a good thing. Um, but what I'm gonna do is cut the flange off of this, get a little 90 so it comes up, and the exhaust is gonna be like right about there-ish. Something to that effect. Um, and I'll probably, what I'll probably do to take the weight off of the stress from here to here, because that's sure to damage something, what I'll probably do is weld uh, a little hook here and a hook to the exhaust and use a rubber exhaust hanger from an automobile to kind of anti-vibe it, but also still let it move around a little bit. So I don't know, we might add more bracing after that too, but that's the plan. So that's good. Um, the air inlet is here. I have the original air, air filter for this, which I could try. I have a Kubota air filter, which the previous guy that had this made this little adapter and got a Kubota air filter canister style. And then I have the original canister style filter housing that mounts here. That's way in the future. Um, I'm also gonna have to run the oil pressure line and whatnot. And originally that would have been up on the rollover protection, which is not on this right now. I pulled that off, but I'm gonna mount it like next to the seat on the plate that goes over here, just so that it's, um, 
I don't have to run a mile and a half a line. I'm also gonna put this together with the idea that the rollover protection is removable, whereas in the original design, um, the rollover protection, you couldn't really just take it on and off too easily. Why I wanna do that is because I know at least one person that might, I know that I might rent, lend this to something like that, that wants to dig out underneath a foundation with this of their house. They're gonna get their house jacked up and they need a skid steer to get underneath it. This is a great machine for that, but with the rollover protection, it makes it quite tall. If we can bring that down, you know, for, for a use case like that, I think that would be acceptable. Also, I think with the Mustang version of this, the rollover protection was optional. I've seen a lot of these without any trace of the rollover protection, though. Working outside, if it was hilly at all or anything like that, or if I'm lifting up loads high, I really wouldn't want to run it that way, typically. But in certain circumstances, you gotta have room. You gotta have room. Yeah, so anyways, I was looking into ways to mount the uh, the motor up and not really loving any of them uh, because I don't have the right material here. I don't wanna go buy the right material because it's so expensive right now. It just really is killer expensive. But what I had lying around from uh, the Gale Skid Steer Project, which you should totally watch, are these nice Westerby motor mounts. Um, this actually would, would be two of these on the motor and two of these on the transmission on that. So the weight of that package would be probably four or five times the weight of this. So I know these look kind of flimsy almost, but they're absolutely made for the weight. In fact, these look exactly the same as the motor mounts on my ski boat that has a 351 Windsor in it. So if it's, if it's stout enough for that, it's stout enough for this. Uh, granted, there might be more torsional load on this than that, but I'm willing to take the gamble. So my plan is to get the height right. So if I put these on the bottom surface of the plate, you can see that that's not quite high enough. Uh, and I don't want to drop it down very far because I don't, I also really don't want this motor to be rattling against those lines there. So. My plan at the moment is I'm going to take this back out. So I'm gonna mount, I'm gonna put this through that hole, which might require me to drill it out a little bit, but that's fine. And then I'm gonna mount these, drill the holes and tap them for these, which gives them a little bit of wiggle too, to this piece of half inch plate. And then I'll put this piece of half inch plate in on top of these stiffeners here that go to the length of it and weld it down once it's in place. So that lets me kind of, um, that's gonna really be nice because it's gonna allow me to get this bolted to this to this, everything sort of hooked together, but I'll still be able to float around a little bit the whole thing until I'm exactly happy with it. And then I can weld it, uh, you know, tack it in place, pull it, pull the whole thing out and weld the, weld the heck out of it. So um, it is gonna be quite a process to do this, but at the end of the day, you're gonna have something where you're gonna be able to reach into like here, undo two bolts or four bolts, but, or eight bolts, because there's four of these mounts, uh, undo the eight bolts and slide the whole thing right out the, the back of it. So that's gonna be really, really convenient for motor mounting and unmounting, especially if you were to try to do it, you know, this, this space here doesn't give you a lot of room for an engine crane. That's the other reason it's up on the, uh, the hoist is that if, the, if it's at the same height as the engine crane, instead of leaning down and hitting it like that, it's straight, so it's got more room to go up and down. Okay guys, so a little progress made. Uh, one thing I figured out, the reason why it was sitting odd before was that this front plate was three eighths of an inch t thicker than this back plate. Um, I don't know if it was the smart way to do it or the dumb way to do it, but uh, I knew it didn't really matter if there was an angle there on these, even this way a little bit, because uh, they're flexible motor mounts. But, so I did my best and used a, uh, uh oh. It's the caps. Yeah. Anyway, so I used an angle grinder, just ground this down as, as close to that level as I could. I think I'm gonna hit this one a little bit more looking at it. It's pretty angled, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter. It's all gonna be just fine. And I got the motor mounts bolted on. So I got three eighths inch bolts that just barely don't come through the bottom. So they'll be fully bolted, but I don't have to worry about where I weld. And the, the, what I'm gonna do is slide this in and because I wanna weld to this flange as well as this one, I'm welding wherever I can, I don't have a good sense of where the front of that plate goes exactly. 
So I'm going to put it in and where it lines up, I'm just going to snip it off and that should work perfectly. So uh, then it'll be snipped exactly where I want it and it'll fit well front to back. So yeah, that's the plan. So I'm going to get the engine hoist ready and slide it on in the, the hole. I did put the, uh, the tensioner back on. I had that off. The spring for the tensioner is, doesn't have an end anymore, but that's fine. And then if it fits, I will put some tack welds where all these bars are. And then we'll disconnect these 3 8 bolts because that's how the engine is going to come out in the future. You're going to take off the 3 8 bolts. So that preserves your uh, alignment so you don't have to start from scratch. And it makes it easy because you'll be able to undo those and the thing should just slide out. And the level of that is going to be just over the top of this. So even if you can't get your hoist and lift on it too much, you can almost just slide it right out. So that should be perfect. Yeah, no, this is coming together really well. I'm pretty pleased with it. All right, so um, I did blow the engine uh, engine bay out and I ground it down. We're, we're a lot better now. So uh, I'm gonna slide it in and reposition it and hopefully get it back to where it was before I took it out so that I could put it in. Alrighty, well, I've got it in reasonably close to where I want it. Close enough that I know that uh, if I look over the front down at the pulleys, they're reasonably close to in line. I hope they actually are because I just looked at this from the top, but have no idea what you're seeing. Hopefully you can see them. So anyways, I know that I can cut this one off right about here and I can cut this one off right about there. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'll just pull it back. I'm going to use a sawzall because it's quick and uh, mark it up and cut it off. And uh, yeah, then we're really, really close here to, well, to, to the next hundred things we have to do. All right, guys. Um, yeah, I moved this over here so it's less loud, but it's going to be awkward looking. But what can you do? So anyways, um, we're going to get this thing running today. So we've got a few things that we're going to need to do. I've got a piece of stainless steel pipe, 16 gauge with a 90 in it. It was sold as exhaust pipe. I don't think this is meant for exhaust pipe, but it is going to do what I needed to do. We're going to cut it down. We're going to put it in there and uh, we're going to weld it to this bad boy. Actually, I should see if the uh, yeah, we got the right size even. So that'll be step one of them. Um, we've got to figure out the output from the pump and the input from the pump, but um, that's gonna be as easy as taking one of the old fittings for this and welding a nipple on it to go for the hose that goes to there, and I've got that. And this one was the result of just buying a couple of adapters at a local hydraulic shop. So. That's pretty well sorted, so that's good. Uh, for the fuel situation, we've got to run new fuel lines because the old these old ones are just stiff, stiff as a board, hard, and you know whatever. We're gonna replace them. Um, the other thing we got to do is install a nipple in the top of this tank here for the return from the injectors. I considered teeing it back into the line, but unless it can flow back into the top of this, you're just gonna have an air bubble that just keeps circulating. So this has to go back to the tank properly. Um, we're probably gonna actually drill that fitting next to this hole so I can put like a rag underneath and catch all the shavings. Uh, this is like an eighth of an inch thick, so it's perfectly fine to, to thread a tap into it. You'll also notice this tank is absolutely 100% structural to the machine. So if you have one of these and the tank rots out, it just, you're, you're, you're hosed. Um, not much we can do about that. For belts, I have a 48 inch belt on here right now. It's got just a little tension, but I can actually adjust 
the amount of tension applied by adjusting that bolt there. So, uh, and we're not hitting, uh, it's real hard to see that, but we're not also hitting the, um, the tensioner against this pulley here. So that's golden. And once all that's done, so we'll have the fuel, the exhaust, and um, the belt, the power transmission going, then we're pretty much golden. Yeah, that, then we're gonna fire it up and we're gonna spin the uh, drive wheels and even try to lift and lower some stuff on the front and the, these hydraulics, we're gonna connect all these up and see if they do anything. Um, I don't have a lot of high hopes for these hoses lasting any amount of time. Uh, they were smooth when they were new. I've never seen this malarkey before. For hydraulic fluid, we're gonna put the, the used fluid we took out of the, the CAT 302.5 mini excavator. I wouldn't normally be into the idea of reusing fluid, but so many of these lines have been open for so long that we're, we're obviously got con water contamination, other crap contaminating in the system. I know that used fluid is not great, but it also doesn't have a lot of water in it. So we're going to um, put it in here, test it. If everything works, we're going to drain it all back out again. And um, yeah, that'll be the big deal is we'll drain it all back out again. And because we're going to pull this motor back out and we're going to tear this thing down and we're going to paint it. I think we got to paint it. I hate painting stuff, but whoever painted this last time, I mean, they didn't even clean anything up. It would have looked better if they did nothing to it. So, um, you know, I think painting it's the thing to do. So yeah, uh, and I also gotta find a seat because those are just, I don't know why. In my head, it's like a tractor seat. It should be like 50 bucks, maybe, maybe 100 for something like real nice. But no, they're like a couple hundred dollars. Plus everything just got stupid expensive. All at once, it seems like the prices on all the stuff that I play with went up by like a third. But I'm also the cheapest bastard on YouTube. So um, who really knows? So I'm gonna reuse as much stuff as I can, as best I can. So that's the plan for today. Uh, we'll see how far we get through it, but I really wanna see this thing start up and rotate these axles. And if that works, I'll clean this crap out of the way, throw some tires on it and hammer it around the neighborhood, much to the chagrin of my neighbors. So uh, I think we're gonna start by cutting this flange off and making the exhaust. All right, guys, I don't know how well you can hear me with the fan running, but uh, I cut the flange off of here clean that off. Got it ground relatively straight, took my piece of stainless exhaust tubing that probably isn't made for that, and I'm gonna tack it on here with the MIG and um, keeping this oriented correctly. And um, then I'm gonna put it in the machine and tack it together. I'm probably gonna TIG weld the final product, but uh, for just tacking stuff in place, you just, you just can't beat a MIG, so. We're just gonna take a look at it. Looks pretty square. Pretty good, actually. I'm gonna put another tack 180 degrees off just so uh, just so it holds together a little better. I've got the flange already bolted on right there. 
uh, that I cleaned up very reasonably well. Let's see how, uh, how weird this looks. I, I like it. Hey, it'll be a little bit crooked in some way, shape, or form, but uh, this isn't a beauty competition. It's just a, an exhaust system, so. All right, so looking at it straight from the back, I think we're a little bit this way, but we're pretty good this way. And let's go around the side and see how bad we did there. Everything else looks pretty good. I mean, it has to be pretty bad for me to do anything about it. Well, you see it's right in there. I think, uh, I don't think I'm gonna complain about it. I could see that it's tilted a little bit, but I do actually have some, so a little bit of finagling with that flange. I don't know, I like it. You know what? We're gonna weld it up. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull it off, weld it up, and then uh, put it back on again. Because any sort of building project like this, if you don't like taking the same thing apart and putting it back together again 30,000 times, just don't even start. Um, it's, it's kind of the worst part of it. You just have to just have to take it apart and put it together. The only other way to really do it that I've found effective is if you model absolutely everything accurately in something like SolidWorks, then you can get away with only a few times assembling it. Of course, I burn a hole through it, tacking it in place, but again, this is just a skid steer exhaust. She ain't going to SEMA this year, so. Alrighty, that went pretty well. Um, yeah. So I just did tacks because I kind of have the welder turned up a little bit high for this purpose, but um, if you just do a series of tacks, you end up with something that looks honestly pretty damn decent. Uh, whereas if I tried to drag a bead on that, I would have just been fighting myself. So, um, got all, whatever hole I poked in it sealed back up. So, yeah. We will be done with that. I'm just gonna let it side to cool off. I am gonna build a, a mount for up here, a rubber mount, like, a, like in an automotive, because from this sort of length, it's just gonna break off eventually from vibration. Uh, and just a little bit of a rubber hanger will hopefully fix that problem. So I really don't want to, I don't care if I damage this so much, but I really don't want to damage that cast iron manifold if I can avoid it. So, um, yeah. Okay, so that's one thing done. While we're welding, we should um, grab the fittings for that, put it together to make sure they're gonna work, because I'm not 100% positive and then um, work on the intake. All right, so um, to fit this end, I got an adapter and a 90, and hoping that goes on there. Yeah, that goes on there, okay. Clean as much crap out of that as possible, but the uh, inside of this hose is seriously heinous, but I'm gonna be replacing most of these hoses anyways after the test and the hydraulic fluid, so it just, we just gotta live with it for today. Why don't I replace the hose ahead of time? Because, I don't know. It feels like bad luck to do that before I've tested it, so. 
These little side attachments should be rotatable, I think. We will see. I've kind of been banking on that, but... But I didn't ever check or do any research into the matter, so... Oh yeah, it's gonna be indexable. So um, I should not be reusing this O-ring, but I am. So when it leaks here, you guys can go, hey, you dummy, you shouldn't be reusing that O-ring. But um, yeah, it's just an O-ring seal face with four holes. You can only use three at a time because of the, the shape of it, but I'm also reusing the rubber bonded washer. This is a BSPP style connection, British straight pipe, I think. And you're supposed to use a, a bonded rubber washer, or a rubber bonded washer, rubber baby buggy bumper maybe. Anyways, you're supposed to use a new one of those every time too. So, um, so if this is going to be here, and that's going to go there. Oh yeah, that'll be that'll be nice. This is nice about this is that I've got a swivel here, so uh, it really gives me a lot of uh, opportunity for success. So. Put this on down here. So now this is almost certainly the wrong hydraulic pump. I think it's way too small, like about half the volume per revolution it should be. Um, assuming I've done any of my calculations right. But that's okay, it'll, it'll work for the purpose. If it was way oversized, if it was twice the size it should be, I wouldn't wanna do testing with it uh, because you could damage a lot of stuff. So in the case of this, look at that. That, minus all the crunching sounds of the rust being forced into places it ought not be forced. Go. So actually that looks pretty neat and tidy back there. I don't know what you guys can see of it. Um, I, I, I really like it. Um, I guess my only concern is gonna be is, uh, will the door clear this? It might stick out a little bit far for that. I'm not sure that I have a good solution to it. So it might be that if the door hits this, I'm just going to make the door stick out further. The other thing is the door has some ribs in it. And if it hits one of those, I'm just going to hack some of it out. Uh, and now I got to deal with this bad boy here. So let's see what we got to make that happen. This one's going to take a little more work. Wow, that one's tight. This is the hose for that purpose. So it's got to go from here to somewhere around there. And this is the barb for that hose. So the barb, I was really just going to weld on there, but clearly there's not enough room for that. What I think I will do is return to the hardware store and get a 45 so I can do that. And then the hose can go over it just like that. I think that's the thing to do. Um, I hate putting bends in hydraulic stuff. You know, every 90 degree on your suction line is kind of screwing you a little bit, but um, whatever. One must do what one must do to do what one wants to do. Yeah. All right, so this adapter we're about to make is not, it's not gonna be a sterling example of the breed, but, I really didn't want to go to the hardware store. So I dug through what I had for stuff. Decided I'm gonna make something work. So I have got a half inch 90 street. I've cleaned up some of it for the welding. I've got that uh, nipple cut in half. I turned off the galvanization in this area with the lathe. And then I've got the um, adapter there and it's facing our direction. And so basically my plan is, is that this welds to here and this welds like this. And um, yeah, then the, then the hose can just come over the top a little bit. I think it'll be perfect. Um, then we'll have two welds to leak instead of just the one, which is, you know, it's just the way it should be, so. But uh, actually that's all the bits. We're ready to rock and roll. So I'm gonna fire up the welder and uh, clip on the ground somewhere reasonable and uh yeah ooh hot hot hot
right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, weld this bad Larry up. Um, this is, I think, a malleable iron fitting and not cast iron fitting. So that's why it actually, uh, why this works. Hey, that doesn't look terrible at all. I am doing my best to avoid this spot here because I think I would like to put a circular shroud that extends out to the mesh on the back of the door just to make sure the engine's getting very clean suction and also to put a screen over that area so that if you're in like a lot of chaff or a lot of junks coming through the air, it's almost like a pre-filter that you can just take off and just knock on the ground real easy. So, what's left? All right, next up is the fuel system. Got to get some fuel going to the right places, the right type of fuel line. It doesn't really, actually gas and diesel can use the same, but the old fuel line's no good. And we'll see if I can take this sender right here out, but it is gonna be a pain in the butt. I'm not aware why they went through such great lengths to put it right there, but underneath everything. They really found a good spot to make sure that it was impossible to get at. All right, I'll bring you guys back once I've uh, taken out the screws and pop that little lid off, and maybe we can see a little bit down into uh, what's going on. All right, guys, I got the hole open, and I don't even know if you guys will be able to see down in there. It's almost impossible for me. Uh, no, in any case, it actually looks beautiful in there. There's a little bit of, we'll call it fuel for lack of a better term at the bottom of the tank. Um, I could have taken this off like half an hour ago. Anyways, um, there's a little bit of the bottom of the tank, but we'll just pull it out with the vacuum extractor. Other than that, it really does look like clean bare metal in there as much as I can see. So I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm, a mouth. I'm going to just vacuum out all of the, um, or suction out all the um, gas. It's not really gas anymore in the bottom of that. And, um, you know, make sure I put in like two, three gallons of diesel. So if there's any gas in there, it's really just a very minor dilution, so. All right, I'm gonna do that, and then um, we're gonna drill the uh, hole in the top and tap it, and we're gonna do that somewhere right, right in there, um, just to be easy to get at. Maybe sort of, I'm thinking maybe there's the, there's the outlet there that's from factory right there. I'm thinking almost maybe just put it opposite it, just to, just to make it look a little bit nice but not too nice. You've seen the rest of the work I've done. All right, guys, uh, here it is, the moment I've all been waiting for. Um, I plumbed in the fuel lines, so they're all plumbed, and nothing's gonna rub against the belts. I've got the belts on. I don't know if they tension enough at the moment, but they're tensionable. I will untension them while I'm trying to start it. Uh, I have a very fine electrical system, as you can see here. I am full of hydraulic oil. Yeah, so um, I think that's gonna do it. Actually, one thing I am gonna do is, um, I don't have a good way of bleeding the hydrostatic pumps, but I can at least crack this and uh, crank it a little bit and some oil should come out of there, probably, maybe. So we'll see. Let's just take a look again real quick. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna put that back on. 
Oh, one thing we can do, just to make sure some oil is getting this pump, we can crack this off and because the oil levels up here. So if we crack this free, um, I wouldn't bet money that I have this pump pumping the right way or anything about this right. I thought that I checked it all and I thought that I was pretty sure that I was right, but that was past me. So who knows? All right, got that broken free. I think we're backwards. So that's good because this whole system's full of fluid. Crap. Well, that's all right. I'll, uh, I'll get that sorted and I'll bring you guys back. It's gonna be lovely. Alrighty guys. Well, I uh, ran a little test again. I was able to get this swapped around and luckily enough, when I switched from this side to this side, the timing of this was good enough. I'll definitely need a new hose. This one's not long enough anymore, so good on me for cutting that when I did. Um, I, I primed the fuel system already um, for the most part. I primed it with the pump. Um, I'm just gonna crank it over for a little bit here. Also need to make sure that is open. And uh, yeah, we'll see. See if we can get her fired up. This has always been difficult to get to start, but I think that's a fuel system side issue, uh, like a losing its prime. Okay, that was just a little bit too much load when I fire when I put uh, some spin to those uh, hydrostatics. Are we leaking like a sip? No. Okay. All right. Well, that actually went really well.
So a couple things. One, um, those arms, totally full of water. Dumped it everywhere, which I thought was a tremendously large hydraulic oil leak. Uh, so I'm pretty happy that it's not. The downside is, this is gonna be a pain in my, this is gonna suck to deal with. I thought I had planned this out properly, but apparently the engine doesn't spin the way I think it spins. It, so the hydrostatic pumps are definitely spinning backwards because when I push forward, these turn backwards. When I push backwards, these turn forward. And when I try to turn left or right, it turns the opposite way. So that sucks. On the plus side, uh, the secondary hydraulic pump seems to work perfect. Uh, really, the lift and lower speed seem more than adequate. Um, I'm kind of ready to put some wheels on this thing and sit on the most uncomfortable thing that I can find and, uh, you know, zip it around a little bit. Um, <sighs> shit. I wish it wasn't backwards. Let me look at the whole situation. Well, there's nothing for it but to... Uh, to put some wheels on it and drive it around anyways, because I, I gotta have something. I gotta have something to make this video have been worth watching and not just the fact that a guy put this much time into something and got it back. So it's a 50-50 shot, so guaranteed it's, it's not gonna work. Um, let me move my junk out of the way and throw some wheels on this and I don't know, drive it around a little bit because I can. Damn it. I wonder if these are bi-directional pumps. Maybe I could just swap lines around and get where I need to get. I'm gonna do some research. Um, I'm gonna feel stupid while I'm doing it though. And uh, yeah, and definitely uh, if you got one of these, maybe drill a big old hole right around there because just chock full of water, which I thought the world was ending when it all came pouring out the back. Um, so. All right, I wanna drive this thing around. That's gonna make me feel better, even though I screwed up. All righty, if all goes well, you'll see me uh, back this bad boy out of here. What the? Well, I don't know how it happened. I think there's something wrong with that little hydraulic pump I was using because it started puking oil out the top of the engine. And the engine oil is way, way, way over full. And it wasn't, I'm hoping it's just a bad seal in this pump, in which case, I should be able to figure out how to put a new pump in here pretty soon, but what a fight. Everything's gotta be a fight. It can't have been the pump, pumping the hydraulic oil into there because you'd see the leakage. Wouldn't you? Oh no. This pump seals totally junk. Watch when I turn it sideways. Yeah, yep. Well, there's your problem, lady. We've just, every time we've turned this on, we've been pumping crazy amounts of hydraulic oil right into the, uh, right into the engine. So that's exactly what we, uh, what we wanted to do. Not one bit of this could go okay today, could it? Not, not even one little bit. All right, the audio is gonna be a little weird because I don't have my, uh, my mic on, but uh, I wanted to do a little ending to this video that wasn't as bad as me just getting pissed off and the camera dying because it was too hot. So, I have double checked and I know this 
spins this way. So I will be looking for an appropriately sized hydraulic pump to replace that with. So that spins in the right direction. Not a big deal. I double checked the manual and I'm an idiot. And these pumps do spin backwards of the way they were intended. And in fact, they shouldn't work at all, but why they do is whatever. Um, the good thing is though, is that these are reversible. And as far as I can tell, the only thing I really have to do to make them reverse is I need to take them off here and behind here is the charge pump, which is the pump that, I don't know, it's, it charges things. Uh, anyways, there's a plate there and you just rotate it 180 degrees and it changes the rotation. These were built for, for forwards and backwards rotation. So I'll have to pull the motor out, pull the pulleys off, pull the pumps off, maybe not even pull the pumps off, flip a plate over, and that'll be that. And then um, what I'll need to do on this end is potentially nothing, I think. Uh, I'm gonna try it like this. It does say talk about flipping the, these over to change the direction, but I can also uh, just flip these two hoses around and that'll change the direction anyways. So um, I'm gonna do that first, knowing that if it's really fast in reverse and slow and forward, that I need to figure something out there, which sucks. This side's okay. I could flip it all up over and point it up, but that side's gonna run into uh, that right there. So, uh, again, there's going to be a way around it. It just might require like this to bend up and then something. Oh, well, but anyways, that's it for this week on wires, tires, and fires. At least we got wires, uh, tires this week, but no wires and, and luckily no fires. Uh, I also need to drain the oil out of that and refill it with oil and not hydraulic fluid that I was pumping into it. So wonderfully. So yeah, um, definitely, uh, more than a few steps forward, more than a few steps back, but, uh, keep watching and we'll get this thing going and then, um, we'll paint it and also we'll drill some holes so that this doesn't fill with water and just absolutely. How could this thing have been around for that many years and nobody like did something about that? I don't know. Anyways. Oh yeah. And, uh, if you're still watching, please subscribe. Have a good one.